this position time graph. It's quite a bit different than the other ones we were looking at because they all had diagonals and horizontal lines. This is definitely a curve. So let's look at what that, uh, this object is doing. Remember, the slope of a position time graph is velocity, how fast you're going. So I take a look at this graph, and let's just take a look at one second. At one second, it looks a little bit like a straight line. So it's kind of like a slope about this, a very shallow slope. So the velocity must be very small, so it's moving slowly. But as I go to two seconds, if I look at just that little straight line portion right there, it's a little bit steeper. So the object is going a bit faster. That's called acceleration, an object moving slowly and getting faster. So this object is accelerating. I look over at three seconds, and the slope is even steeper, so I must be going even faster. The question is, how fast am I going at one second, two seconds, or three seconds? I need to know that. Let's look at two seconds. We're just going to do one as a sample. I need to know how fast the object is going, or what its velocity is at two seconds. I know the slope of a position time graph is velocity, so I need to take the slope of that little section. But since it's a curve, I need a straight line to work with. So I'm going to draw what's called a tangent. I draw a tangent, which approximates the curve at that point. So if I look at it, there's a gap on this side and a gap on this side. And if this was graph paper and there were lines on it, this would be much easier. But this is just a sample. So I've drawn a tangent here. And now what I want to do is create a triangle out of that tangent so I can get a rise and a run. I can make that triangle this big or the whole thing. It doesn't matter. But what I suggest you do is make a triangle that goes up from some point on your time axis that's going to give you nice numbers to work with. Instead of like 2.74, you can work with a 3. And over here is a 1.5. So I think I'm going to make my triangle like this. Up from the 3 and across from the 1.5. There's my triangle. That works pretty well. Because now, I've got a base that goes from 3 to 1.5. Nice numbers to work with. Now, the numbers on this side may not work out so well, but we'll see. So I'm estimating it because, again, it's not graph paper. But if I look at my rise, my rise goes from, I uh, look over here, it looks like about 7. It's hard to tell. Um, I go across here, and I look there, and it's a 1. So my rise is 7 minus 1 is 6, and the units are meters, because this was 7 meters minus 1 meter is uh, 6 meters. What about my run? Well, my run here is 3 minus 1.5. Here, this is 1.5. So that is equal to 1.5 seconds. So I have my rise, I have my run. So to find the slope, the slope is rise over run, 6 divided by 6 meters divided by 1.5 seconds is um, 4 meters per second. And it's going to be positive, because this is positive, this is positive, the slope is in the positive direction. So I've got uh, a positive 4 meters per second, so I can say the velocity, and you put a little subscript there, at 2 seconds. The velocity at 2 seconds is equal to 4 meters per second forward. Now I can do the same thing over here at 3 seconds. Draw a triangle, find the rise, find the run, and it will be a bigger number. It might be 6 meters per second. And I can do it over here at 1. Of course, it's going to get very messy because there's a lot of them to put on here. So if I was doing a number of these, I'd make the triangle smaller or it overlap them. But the slope of a position time graph is the velocity. If it's a curve, you draw a tangent, find the slope of the tangent, and that is the velocity at two seconds.